everybody welcome to my video here um, today we're going to be talking about this 2021 14 inch MacBook Pro uh, this particular model is the M1 Pro with 16 gigabytes of memory a 500 gig 512 gigabyte solid state drive um, and I did purchase this unit um, for $320 and some of you might be thinking how on earth did you get a computer like this for $320 well, the main reason is this right here. Um, you can tell that there's a little bit of a dent here. And when I open up this computer, you'll see exactly why it was so cheap. Um, this, this display is completely cracked all across here. And if you actually look at the palm rest down here, completely dented, really, really damaged. Um, so this unit, apparently, it must have fallen off of a table, something like that, hit the corner, dented the palm rest, and destroyed the screen here. Um, I did try to get a quote from Apple to get a replacement screen. Um, they wanted $820 for the repair of just the screen. And I know for a fact if it was actually going to get repaired by them, um, they would require me to get a new palm rest as well, which would be even more money. Um, I'm hoping that if I can replace the screen myself, um, this damage here is not going to just cause it to crack again. Uh, I'm going to have to tell that when I end up replacing the screen. Uh, another factor about replacing the screen on these models, unfortunately, whenever you replace the screen um, with a with a like a donor computer, if you were to have another computer that uh, you got off the part off of eBay or something like that, um, if you were to just swap the screen out, you are going to lose a couple of different things. Um, you will lose true tone functionality, which is kind of the color calibration of the display, um, and then you're also going to uh, lose out. I think from the, I think you're going to lose the sleep functionality. Um, from what I understand, there's a little sensor in here, um, and that also is paired to the display itself. Um, so when you swap out the screen, it's it's not going to work properly. When you close the display, it's not going to turn off like it should. Um, but yeah, so that's not great either. Um, I am a computer technician by trade. Um, I do repair computers on a regular basis. Um, Macs are not my favorite because of how many screws there are, how difficult it is to repair, and on top of that, the, the availability to get parts is a lot harder. Um, and then Apple doing stupid stuff like that, that makes it a lot harder to repair. Um, they do have a self-service self repair program um, where you can get the actual parts directly from Apple. You can repair it yourself, and then after you've repaired it, you can give them a call and they're gonna link the new display to the new unit. Um, so that's what I ended up doing because I can't buy any parts off of eBay. It has to be genuine directly from Apple. Um, so that part is on the way. Um, I will make a separate video of me actually um, repairing this unit, putting a new screen in it, making sure it works, and then going through that process of uh, linking the serial numbers together to make sure I have all the functionality like a brand new computer. Um, but in this video here, um, I just want to show you this computer. Um, I do have this little USB-C dock right over here. Um, and I do have some special software on the computer already to allow me to do a couple of things. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. Let the monitor turn on here in a minute. Okay, I'm going to just type my password in. Okay, so here is the unit itself, like I did say. Um, this is an M1 Pro with 16 gigs of RAM, a 512 gig solid state drive. Um, and I did actually just take a time machine backup from my other unit over here, which is a 2020 M1. Um, took the time machine backup, transferred it over to this unit. So when it is repaired, um, the whole idea is I'm just going to be able to migrate from that one over to this one. Um, so yeah, like I said, that's the specs of the unit. Let's go dive in and see if we can remove this display. I take it back, we're not gonna dive right into that first. I do wanna talk about a couple of pieces of software I do have installed to allow um, this unit to be headless, because that's what I'm gonna do before the part arrives. Um, I'm actually gonna just remove the display, keep it so I can just keep using the, the keyboard and the trackpad, and it'll just have no display whatsoever. It'll be a desktop machine until that part arrives. I know a lot of people are really liking to do that. There's a whole cult following of MacBooks that are called headless. Um, so we're going to show you how to do that. 
We're gonna remove the display in this video and then um, I'm gonna tell you about the pieces of software you are gonna need if you are going to run a MacBook headless. So let's go back over up to this screen over here. Um, I probably should be doing some screen capture, but for right now, we're just gonna do this. Um, the piece of software I'm currently using is called um, Amphetamine, I think, yep. Let's take a look. Amphetamine is the program I'm using here. Um, this program allows the computer never to sleep. Um, as you can see down here, it is not plugged in whatsoever. There is this USB-C hub, but it is not connected to power. Um, the power adapter is not connected here. So there is no power running directly into the computer. It's running just off of battery power. This piece of software allows the unit to stay alive with uh, only battery power. So once this is installed, you can configure pretty much anything you'd like. Uh, but in this case, I'm just using it so it'll never turn off. Um, there is another program called Go ahead and pull this up here called Better Display, which is actually running in the background right now. Um, it is a paid piece of software, and I'm currently using just the free trial. Um, but essentially, you are able to disable the built in display. So, if we were to go completely headless, I can make it so this display just turns off and it's no longer functional. Um, I can demonstrate that here. So, if I hit this button, so I'll keep it on the display right here. If I turn off the built-in display, and then I hit OK right here, the display should just go black, which it does, and hopefully my external monitor comes back. Yep, sure does. So this would be the case, the screen is removed, you don't want power going to a display that's no longer there. You disable the screen, and now it's completely headless. So just ignore this right now. Now I can use just my, my touchpad and my keyboard right here. Um, so those are the two pieces of software you are going to probably need. I'm not sure. I haven't delved too much into it. Um, the, the software here, Better Display, might do both of those things. Keep it, keep it um, alive and not go to sleep, along with disabling the built-in screen. Not entirely sure, but for this demonstration, I'm using both Better Display and Amphetamine here. Um, both seem to be working and doing exactly what I would like it to do. So that's just a preface what you will need to do if you are going to do the same steps as me. All right, so let's start the disassembly process. Um, you probably saw in a previous shot, I do have the 2020 M1 MacBook over here, um, and I do actually have pulled up the iFixit guide, the teardown guide. Not completely necessary, especially as a computer technician, um, but it is absolutely helpful, especially if you've never taken a unit apart. Um, these newer uh, M1 Pro units are a lot easier to work on than some other models, but they're not nearly as easy as um, something like a 2012 MacBook Pro. Those are super, super easy to work on compare in comparison. Um, but yeah, pull up a guide, follow along, watch the video. We're going to go ahead and disassemble this MacBook. So it looks like from the guide here, we are going to be using a P5 driver. Um, I do have my lovely iFixit kit over here has pretty much any bit you'd ever need and some other tools. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remove the bottom panel here. Now keep in mind, some screws are longer than others. You are going to want to put them back in the same way that you had them. Um, and just, just watch the video here and you will know basically where they're supposed to go. Um, but there's usually longer screws in these two spots and then shorter all, all the way around. Um, but let's go ahead and take these out. I was mistaken. It looks like it's going to be long screws all across the top here. So actually, I'm actually going to use the little tray that I have that came from the iFixit kit just to try to keep these things organized for us. So I know all four of these are going to be the right same length. So I'll put those guys together. And I'll put it right next to it, the other bottom panel ones. So let's continue here. Okay, so we've got the screws out, and I'm going to scroll down on my iFixit guide. 
Um, it does say that we should use a suction cup to try to try to pry this thing up. I'm not sure this is going to work too well. But yeah, okay, so it gives me a little bit of a gap here. Um, I'm actually going to take either this tool or some guitar picks here and try to go around the whole unit to unlock the tabs. And I do feel that I unlocked one right there. Go ahead and do this. So I do have a lot of it out. Let's go ahead and try to get this thing off. A lot of times I try to get my fingers under here and then I slide it. So now this whole bottom panel is off. And uh, the reason you're going to have to slide it is if you look on the bottom piece here, there are a couple of clips that have to be slid along with this little guy here, lines up over here and here. Just uh, kind of pry up, slide it, it'll come right off for you. We'll set that guy over here. So now we are looking at the main logic board and battery of this MacBook. Take a good shot here. Looks like here is the cooling fan. Heat sink goes all the way across here. Here's where the processor is going to be along with the other cooling fan. And of course the batteries are right here. They're separa separated out into different modules. USB-C charging. Whole nine yards here. So let's continue on to our iFixit guide. We've already got the bottom plate off. Now, of course, the first thing they're going to recommend is to remove the battery connector, which is always a good thing. Um, I don't always do that, but in this case, I will definitely do like we're supposed to. Um, so we are going to grab another tool here, just a little spudger tool. We're going to take this little ribbon cable. There's a little plastic piece right here. We're going to lift up. Hard to tell here. Sorry. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So this guy is the main one that we're going to do first. Flip up the little plastic tab. And then there's another flipper thing that we're going to just take our tool or a fingernail. Flip that guy to 90 degrees. I might just take a fingernail. Okay, now we got it flipped up. Now theoretically I should be able to pull this tab backwards. Oh, felt like I got it. Almost. And I didn't. Look at that. The whole plastic sticker came right off of that connector. So that's always fun. Even though I have the latch opened, it did not come out like it's supposed to. So we're going to be very gentle here. And I'm actually going to grab probably some tweezers. And be very, very careful because these cables are very delicate. I'm going to just pull on this guy. Man, this is difficult to do on video for you. Okay, almost there, come on. <clears throat> well, dang it. There we go, finally got it. A little uh, camera shy here. That normally would not have taken me that long. But we do have the connector out. Um, we don't need to worry about that little piece of plastic that ripped off, that's not a big issue. Okay, zoom out just a little bit again. Now we're going to go down our iFixit guide one more time. Looks like we're going to remove this bracket right here, which I already knew. Zoom in one more time. So these are going to be different screws. Uh, before we were using a P5 driver. Now we're going to be using a Torx 3, it looks like. Let's see if I can locate that in my toolkit. Let's see, I see a... Where's my Torx? Here we go, Torx 3. So I got the right bit here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this little bracket. Again, keep careful track of these screws, where they go. Grab that guy, put it together, take the little bracket, put that with it. And now we're gonna remove the main battery. Well, actually, that's gonna be the touchpad connector, but we're gonna pry up on that like so perfect so now we can just flip this guy a little more sticker more sticky residue uh, we've got that disconnected now we can see exactly where that cable was going to 
uh, it goes clear down here underneath this little other connector so again we'll kind of lift that guy up and out of the way just a little bit perfect now we're going to go ahead and remove the screw right here let's see what that size is looks like oh I skipped through a whole bunch of stuff here didn't I wow interesting <clears throat> Okay, they actually want me to remove that entire cable. Hmm, I never would have done that normally, but I guess we can do that. So that cable should not have come out like that, but it definitely did. So we're just going to take this cable and set it to the side. Alright, looks like my screw is a T5 now. See how many different drivers you gotta have to work on these computers? Not the funnest thing in the world, but we'll grab a T5 here. Unscrew this main power screw. Again, don't lose this guy. Now we're gonna flip up this like that. Now battery is disconnected from the computer. Um, there is no longer power running through the, this computer. Let's see, looks like the next thing we're going to do is remove the antenna bar. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to read through this guy just a little bit. Okay, three, so we're going to go to Torx 3 again. Not again, but i grab that bit. Alrighty, Torx 3. So it looks like we're going to be focusing right on this guy here, the Wi-Fi antennas. Um, so it's going to be these three screws we're going to have to remove. So we'll go ahead, sorry for this lighting here. All right, grab that. Perfect. Now we do want this little plate. Wow, this is so much difficult, more difficult while recording. <laughs> Anywho, um, yep, remove that. Da, 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 da. Exactly. Next step is to remove these little antenna cables. And of course, these are going to be for your Wi Fi and your Bluetooth module. So we're just going to take our spudger, kind of go up underneath those flip it up out of the way perfect now the next thing we're going to do is remove the entire antenna bar so this is going to be T5 now see if anything the iFixit guide is really good at telling you what screw sizes things are um, I, probably, I probably wouldn't know that right off my head um, so it's very nice that they do have these guides they are very very helpful I'm going to take my picture and zoom in a little bit for my sake here. All right, so these are all T5. They are different lengths, so we do need to keep track of that again. So we're going to remove this screw. It doesn't look like my bits are magnetized like they normally are. And let's see. That's not correct, is it? Looks like there's a couple that are T5. The other one's over here. Man, I wish these were magnetized better. Okay. Hmm, it does claim they're all T5. I don't believe that. Okay, T5 for those two. And we got a couple more here that are going to be T5. So it's underneath this bracket here. Gosh dang, don't drop stuff, guys. Okay, grab this screw and this one. Put those together.
And this guy over here. Focus phone. I did just get a message saying my phone is too hot. Your image quality may be hindered. Thank you, Google Pixel 7. I didn't notice it being hot. Yeah, it is a little warm, actually. It's not plugged in, which is really odd that it's getting hot, but... Okay. So now it says it's a P2 driver for the rest of them. So let's grab that driver. P2. I was going to say that was not a T5. So we're going to grab our P2 and undo all the little tiny screws that are for the antenna assembly. Now these are all going to be the same length, so you can kind of just bunch them together. Still keep them organized so you know where they're going to go. Alright, these guys here now. Wonderful. I got three more, it looks like. It does have a disclaimer on the guide saying that these are very prone to stripping, so you do have to be careful. Wow, to not strip the threads out. Okay, got them out. Perfect. So now that we've got all that up, looks like we can remove the antenna bar, which does appear to be the case. Voila, the whole assembly comes right out. Perfect. Set that to the side. Do not lose it, otherwise you will not have Wi-Fi. Now it looks like the next step is to remove the display connectors. And we will need a T3 driver for those. So there's going to be two here. I've already disconnected the display one other time. So this will be a cakewalk. T3 driver, four screws. And then we're just going to remove this little plate. Keep it with it. Same thing with this one. Okay, and then we're going to lift up on the main ribbon cable here, flip it out of the way, do it with this one, and this one, make sure they're up out of the way, good deal, let's get through like five steps on iFixit. Okay. Looks like that they're, these things are going to come off. Ooh, that's scary, but okay, comes right off. Just going to get your nail under here and disconnect that. Looks like these are kind of loose, but we'll leave those like that. Flip it out of the way a little more. Okay, the next step is to <clears throat> remove the lid angle sensor, which is located on this side. If my phone would focus, but all right. Again, T3 driver. I'm just going to go to this connector here, undo these two screws. Now, again, this is the display angle sensor. Um, that's how the Mac knows if it's closed or open and how to respond to that. And it is serialized with the LCD, so when you do replace the LCD, 
you do have to get a new angle sensor. Thank you, Apple, and your infinite wisdom. More like paywall, but... Okay, got that removed, got that removed. Now it looks like we're going to do the hinge covers, which should be pretty simple. So Apple does have a reinforcement for hinge covers. Um, other computers, especially HPs, they kind of fail in that regard. Um, we see a lot of HP computers come through the repair shop um, with broken hinges. The rivets will just give out. Somebody will come in, hey, I have a, a computer here. I opened it up one day and now my screen assembly is completely falling off. That is due to HP not reinforcing their hinges. They use plastic, gets all over the place and it will break and crack and uh, you will have to get it repaired. But Apple, they do have a metal reinforcement here which is really nice to see. So hopefully uh, your screen assembly doesn't just fly out of the way which is good. Okay, grab this. Now I did drop a screw and I don't know where that went. You guys on video probably can see it and I don't see it. Aha, there she be. Cool. <clears throat> All right, as you saw, I did get the hinge cover piece off. Let's go ahead and do it on this side. Kind of wiggle it, get it out of the way. Cool. Keep those organized of which side is which. Perfect, got the covers off. Now we're just gonna go and remove the T8 screws. So you're keeping track of how many different bits you gotta have to do this repair? Quite a few. All right, where's my T8? Here we go, T8. <clears throat> so these are the screws that we're talking about for the hinges. Go ahead and remove the, ooh, they're torqued on pretty good. Holy crap, okay. They're not supposed to come out. Yeah, those have a lot of pressure, probably some Loctite on them. Yeah, it's got some Loctite. Come on, focus. There we go. So it doesn't come out. Alright. Well, I did it again. I pressed the button and stopped the recording. Must be a sign. Fruit Loops, those are on tight. Holy crumb. <clears throat> All right, so we got both hinge covers out of the way, along with the full hinge assembly. All right, so it does appear that we are on the last step of this display removal process. So we're going to go ahead and lift the MacBook up. And now keep in mind, there's no screws holding this guy in, so we got to be kind of careful not to bend anything. But now all we're going to do is kind of wiggle and jimmy and pull perfect we're headless look at that now these little pieces did fall out for me um, these do just pop back in right over here so that's where these guys go so we're not going to try to lose those but I will just take them out and out of the way but look at that guys we do have the display completely off I'm gonna set that over to the side completely headless so that's pretty cool 
All right, so I am going to try to see if this guy will still turn on and function. Um, not the smartest idea to have stuff disconnected and not put back together, but I will try to see what it will do for us. Um, there is no battery power connected to it, so I will have to plug in our battery. Plug in USB-C, and then we'll get our USB-C dock. Plug that guy in. Press the power button. As far as I know, the fans are going to go crazy. But let's see if it turns on. All right, so we are back. I did connect the battery along with this trackpad cable back together. Um, let's do a second run here and see if this guy powers up. Oh, I hear a chime. Let's see if we get any display here. Okay, I do have a green cap. There we go. Look at that. Completely headless. There is no display whatsoever. So let's go type our password in. Oop. Try that again. <laughs> Alright, look at that. Completely headless. We've got no display. And it is functioning just like a desktop computer would. So if you wanted to go further, of course, um, I'm going to leave it disassembled a little bit like this until um, the new replacement screen comes in, and we're going to make another video of the reassembly guide. Um, but yeah, a lot of people like the headless idea. It's a desktop computer. Um, hook it up just like this, and you still have access to the trackpad and the keyboard. You can use it just like a normal desktop computer, of course, with a USB-C hub. You hook it up to an external monitor, you could have a dedicated mouse and keyboard for this thing, flash drives, whatever have you. Um, works just like a normal desktop. So thanks for watching guys. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye bye.